Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Smartphone manufacturers are getting bolder by the day. Because tell me why you see a brand say, hey, our phone is strong, dip it in water, do drop test, the screen can crack, why not? I mean, that is not how a normal person will use a phone, but I think it's refreshing to know that if I buy a phone and use it without a case, I don't have to worry about breaking it. This is the Realme Note 50, and it's one of the toughest regular phones out there, but it's toughness all that they are selling. Okay, let's start by acknowledging that this is a budget phone. It's actually entry level because it costs less than $70. In Naira, it's a little over 100000 So right off the bat, your expectations for a phone in this price category will be low, especially when it comes to performance. But you see, Realme is trying to make sure that even if it's a budget phone, the value proposition is high, enough to make you consider it over other available options. So we know it's tough, that's already established, but what else does it offer? Now looking at the specs on paper, it measures up to most phones around its price point with a couple of advantages and some disadvantages which we are going to explore and you get to decide whether or not it satisfies your use case for a smartphone. So, Realme is a popular smartphone brand that just made entry into the Nigerian market officially. The fans have actually been looking forward to it. They announced three phones, the GT6, the C61 and the Note 50. At the moment, I think we can only buy the C61 and Note 50. Now, they have a track record of making really interesting phones and pricing it well below the competition. But we are not here to give a history lesson on Realme. Let's dive deeper into the Note 50. This is not a newly released phone by the way, it's actually been launched since like 9 months ago, but it's new to the Nigerian market. I guess depending on the market reception, Realme will introduce more of their smartphones. Hopefully we get to see those flagship killers. That GT7 is looking really good. The Realme Note 50 comes packed with all the right accessories except a pair of earphones. The unboxing experience is as expected but there's a good chance you will get a slimmer box. I noticed there are two different box sizes but not to worry, the content is the same. There is a screen protector pre-installed and there is also a dark transparent case. It comes with a charger but one thing you might not be so happy about is that it is 10 watts, so slow charging. It won't be much of a problem for an average user though because it has a large enough battery which lasts a day for the average user. The design of the Realme Note 50, while familiar, it actually looks great if you ask me. You get two color options to choose from, sky blue and midnight black. It has an all-round flat design which looks nice for a budget phone. The fingerprint scanner, we have that placed on the power button and it does the job just fine. The top part of the rear is glossy while the rest of it is matte textured. You can probably see the marks from all the hammer and drop tests trying to confirm its durability. Yeah, I dropped a hammer on the rear and people were still requesting I do it on the display. I don't think that's necessary because I think we've already proven that it's a tough phone. Plus, nobody uses their phone like this by the way, it's a budget phone and I bet you won't try this on your more expensive mid-range or flagship phones. I dare you to try this on your iPhone or Samsung. I dare you. But based on all the unnecessary dot tests, uh, I eventually cracked one of the camera glasses. Thankfully, it wasn't the main camera. But seeing all that I've put it through, coming out with just a crack on one of the lenses is a win, I must say. A few moments later. It's still working, working fine. So while we can acknowledge that it's a tough phone, I believe you're going to use it like a normal person. We do this test because it's practically our job. It's got IP54 rating for dust and water resistance. You don't see ingress protection at this price point, but Realme was kind enough to give us that advantage. Now note that IP54 is meant that it should survive splashes and maybe water sprayed on it from any direction. It should also survive accidental drops in water, but dipping it intentionally is not advisable. Liquid damage is not covered by warranty. Just thought you should know that. On its display, we have a 720p LCD panel which looks solid for a budget phone. It uses a U-notch. It is 6.74 inches in size and it has a refresh rate of 90Hz. You don't get the option to fix it at 90Hz always. You either set it to auto or you choose 60. From my test, it does a good job switching to 90Hz when the system requires it. Now on the software side of things, you'll notice it looks much like stock Android UI. Sadly, it's on Android 13. Now that is not bad for a budget phone, but seeing that this phone was released a couple of months ago and Android 15 is already launched, that brings a question of if it will get software updates. Nothing has been officially promised. It got a massive update about 4.5 gigs in size, but that did not bring Android 14. 
But on that note, Android 13 is still fully capable of running your regular apps even for a few more years to come. There are even a lot of users that have not upgraded to Android 14. But yeah, I like the fact that the software is light and it has the essential customization and multitasking features. The Realme Note 50 is an entry-level phone and it will meet your expectations as long as those expectations stay at entry-level. The fact that it has close to stock Android UI does not keep it free of some bloatware applications, but it is ad-free and you can uninstall most of the bloatware if you do not find them useful. It is still one of the neatest Android software experiences you will get at this price point. The base version of the Realme Note 50 comes with 3 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. I recommend spending a little more and going for the 4 gig version. It's going to be better overall for some multitasking. On the day-to-day -day use, the Realme Note 50 holds its own quite well as long as you understand that it's an entry-level phone and don't expect it to do heavy lifting. It will handle your average day-to-day -day needs of a smartphone with little to no hassle. The cleaner software experience makes it one of the better options for an entry-level phone. The processor powering this guy is a Unisoc T612 processor which handles some gaming on low graphics. but I won't be buying this for gaming, and I'm sure you know you need a bigger budget for something that can game proper. The Unisoc T612 might not be popular, but I can assure you it is one of the better performance for an entry-level phone. When it comes to battery life, there is no problem thanks to the fact that it has a 5000mAh battery, but as mentioned earlier, it's just 10 watts charging. In the camera department, while it has just 13 megapixels for its main camera and 5 megapixels for its selfie, you will find that it does just fine if you can stick to the right lighting, precisely outdoors and during the day. The Realme Note 50 is a highly recommended entry-level device. It is one of the better ones out there thanks to a light software experience, great build quality, and an IP54 rating. The fact that it's on Android 13 though and the slow 10 watts charging is something you might want to take note of, but that's probably not a deal breaker, especially seeing what this phone costs. This should already be available in stores and you can also try Jumia if you don't mind buying online. That's all from me. On to the next. That was freaking loud. Did you trade it off? Yeah. Oh boy, you have just dropped this from your waist height. 